YouTube, what is up? If you don't know who I am, my name is Jose Tejas. I am the host of Box to Box on Goals TV um, and the host of this channel. And uh, we are about to jump into the Caleb Wu or Caleb Wu TV episode. Uh, interviewing Caleb Wu, who, if you guys don't know who he is, we'll link some of his content in the description for you down below. But he is a college soccer player, a content creator, and someone who just wants to make soccer cool in North America and in the United States, which is what we're all about here at Goals TV. So before we jump in, please do me a favor. It really does help the channel. Subscribe to the channel. We're well on our road to 100 subscribers. Can't wait to get there. Um, and drop a like on the video. It really does help us get the word out, help tell Caleb's story, which is what we're all about here at box to box and at Goals TV, telling soccer stories that we feel are relatable to the next generation of fans. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in uh, and enjoy. All right, guys, welcome in Box to Box, episode 27. Man, where is the time going? Episode 27 of Box to Box presented by Goals TV. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jose Tejas. I am the host of this show. Um, I'm also joined by one of our other mainstay hosts today, Andre Gutierrez, Coach Dre. Coach Dre. How's it going, bro? How's uh, Tuesday? We're recording at about 3 p.m. Central Time. How's 2023 treating you so far? It's it's going well, man. I uh, a little bit sad. I'm not gonna lie. I will be honest with you guys. Uh, <laughs> Jesse Marsh, my guy. What's going on? That was that was. A I was waiting to ask you about that, bro. Dude, I, I I didn't know if it was too soon or it's been, like, you know. It's it's been a whirlwind of emotions. Like we get McKinney. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it, I'm all in, dude. Like, I'm all in. Captain America. Let's Imagine go. being him. Imagine being I him. I know, though. I know. <laughs> like he I mean, he was a huge reason why he went. Um, and then all of a sudden you play one game and then your coach is gone. I think I mean, we don't have to get into it, but it's been <laughs> crazy the last couple couple days because I was already prepping like mentally for the back to back games against Manchester United. And I'm thinking, oh, you yeah. know, that's gonna really define where he goes, like does he stay? Do they give him a shot? And now it doesn't even fucking matter. Like mentally, yeah. I, I can't even imagine being a player in the locker room right now. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, he felt like a player's coach. Um, I yeah, feel bad dude. for Weston. It is what it is, but I mean, at the end of the day, he still has American teammates. Maybe the next guy is going to really prioritize him. I think we'll see. Hopefully. But with that said, guys, um, very special episode today. I feel like I say that a lot, but it does have a different feel. We're talking all things college soccer today. Um, I want to tell some really cool stories. I want to debunk some myths along the way. And we cannot do any of that without our guest. Our guest is a, uh, is it a senior now, Caleb? A senior at Western New England University, um, a transfer at that. Um, and more importantly, a content creator who's massively passionate about growing this game in the United States. I, I really can't hype this guy up anymore. I'm so glad that he's here. Please welcome Caleb Wu of, I'm just going to say it, of Caleb Wu TV, man. Your yeah, channel. Rock, the, rock that uh, logo, that baby. I, I've become a really big fan of it. <laughs> yeah. Rep the merch. Yeah, yeah, give, give, give us Rep the, the hoodie. merch, boy. Rep the, mer rep the merch. <laughs> I, I do need it. I need a, I need a second uh, merch drop, but I got to find someone to design for me. There you go. Yeah, man. Um, but, I love it, bro. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that hoodie afterward. I might have to grab me one of those. But um, yeah. but look, man, I, I think um, I want to formally welcome you to Box to Box. We haven't had a show or an episode, I should say, dedicated to college soccer, which I think is always kind of ironic because everybody on this panel today on this show is a, at least a former college soccer athlete or a current one, right? Like we all have yeah. that in mm -hmm. common today. So I think that there's no better forum for us to talk about the ins and outs of the process, maybe what players can expect. And I think more importantly, your story. Your story because it's so unique. I, I don't come across many individuals, athletes, I should say, that have the time, right, and the creativity to build a channel and content on the side while they're juggling school, while they're juggling um, playing responsibilities, everything that comes along with that. So today for episode 27 of Box to Box, we are going to unpack all of that in a really interesting and hopefully storytelling focused way. But before we jump in, um, as always, guys, I say it every time, uh, Box to Box is presented by Goals TV. Uh, Goals.tv is where you can find all of your free, unlimited footy content 24 uh, seven. And you can find Caleb Boo's videos on that platform as well. Visit Goals.tv today to consume as much as your heart desires. All right, guys, let's jump in. So Caleb, I, I want to get to your story. We will get there, but I think we got to give you know everyone who's watching a, a proper intro to Caleb Wu and Caleb Wu TV. So, Caleb, if you don't mind, I ask everybody on the show, "Who are you today?" 
All right, so I'm Caleb Wu. Um, I go by Caleb Wu TV a lot. That's what a lot of people call me, uh, whether whenever they see me. But um, I'd say I'm an entertainer. I do soccer content, college soccer content, uh, Division three soccer content, kind of comparing the different divisions. Um, do game day vlogs, uh, just like mic'd up videos. Um, but yeah, I just I like to entertain and make people smile. Um, so that's that's basically me. I love it, man. That's a great way to intro yourself. Um, and, you, and it's kind of crazy. You, you'd be surprised how often people stumble across that question. But I yeah. think you you summarize who you are and what you do really well. Um, so let's uh, and look. I, I, how we're going to do this today? Let's keep this much of a conversation as possible. You know, I, Andre and I are going to ask questions. It's not going to be quick fire. I'll ask one. I'm sure Andre will step in and ask whenever he sees fit. And what we want to do today is give the people who are interested in college soccer content for one reason or another. Maybe it's an aspiring high school student athlete. Maybe it's a parent trying to figure out how this world works. And I think the one thing that, you know, Andre and I have in common, and we don't, we don't talk about it enough on this show, is that we came, we grew up in very blue collar family situations. Um, families who don't have any experience understanding the landscape of college soccer, what it entails, how to play the recruitment game, the details within, right? All of those things, we, uh, we, we had no, no benchmark for how to do those things the right way. We kind of had to figure it out on our own. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, if a channel like yours existed back then, right? If YouTube was the behemoth that, you know, that it is now, maybe we, we could have prevented some missteps along the way. Right. And I think that's the goal for this episode is can we provide new viewers or viewers in general with that kind of value? So, you know, let, let's jump in. But again, Andre, jump in whenever you see fit, man. And, and Caleb, feel free to answer as, as, as honestly as you really want to. And let's tell some cool stories. All right. So Sorry. first things first, um, I like to always start from the beginning, man. Um, so, again, I summarized you as a, a, a senior college soccer player who also creates content on the side. That is massive but let's start at the beginning so one like just take me take start, help me understand why you wanted to start playing college soccer to begin with because I, from, from what i understand so many players out there sometimes have that dream but i think the bigger dream is to go pro maybe they just think that college soccer is the path to do that in this country i don't know maybe you agree or disagree but what where did your thought process really start and how did that kind of scale as you continue to get a little bit deeper into that process? Yeah, so when I was really young, I mean, everyone wants to play professional soccer. Um, but as I got a little older, middle school, high school, I really wanted to just continue playing and play college soccer. Um, that was basically the main goal. I'd, kind of put the professional aside um i kind of looked at it it's i my perspective has changed a lot about college soccer obviously once i started playing and um now and then pr seeing the professional side um knowing people who have played uh how they've made it um just the different there's so many different stories and different ways to get into college soccer professional soccer and everyone just has a different journey so i've seen a lot of unique and cool uh journeys by myself yeah. so quick question on that um and i think jose kind of touched based on it a, a little bit at the beginning um you know for example he and i our families had no idea that there was a path right like there was a chance for you to play at a pretty high level and at the same time get your degree right it was you know i come from a background i'm from mexico where you choose one or the other you get to a certain age probably about 14 15 and then you say okay i'm going to keep doing the youth development academies and then just keep moving on up and then just you know going to stick to that route and go pro it happened to a lot of my buddies i still have friends that are playing professionally now that's the path whereas here in the states there's a lot of opportunities even beyond d1 right you've got d2 d3 naia like there's an opportunity for everybody out there um so my question is did you have any of those resources available to you did you do your own research how did you know that college was kind of the path for you okay so I mean, I do think it's really interesting that the U.S. has college soccer at a pretty good level compared to anywhere in Europe or just any other countries in general. Like college, there's college soccer doesn't really exist. Like you said, it's like either professional or you go to college and you don't really play like at a high level. 
Yeah, it's very unique. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really interesting. And I kind of did my own research, but mostly I was just looking to find colleges um, that I had I could have the opportunity to play and eventually get minutes and start at. Um, so I kind of had a different perspective on it. I was lowly recruited out of high school. Um, I, in, in college soccer, it's just, uh, like very physical compared to, um, other countries. And I think that the playing has gotten better, but, um, physicality is definitely like a big part of it. And I was a very small player, um, technical, but size strength, I wasn't necessarily at like a college level. Um, that people could say, I think, I mean, I did put on a lot of muscle. I was like 115 uh, going into my senior year. And I, wow. now I'm like, now I'm almost uh, 160. So I, mean, go. I got in the gym a lot. I, I enjoy working out, uh, but I still, I still think the technical side of the game is very underrated. And if, if you're able to escape challenges and you have good balance, I don't think that you have to be the most physical player, even in college soccer. Um, obviously, it still helps in 50-50s and stuff like that. But if you're yeah. keeping the ball and you're creating chances or if you have good soccer IQ, um, I think – Size don't matter. That's just like the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the, that's fair. The other thing that I was going to ask um, is – you know, as I'm thinking about my own path now that we're talking about it and I'm coming back to, you know, bringing back a lot of memories, I'm sure for you too, Jose, but um, the biggest thing for me when I was getting recruited was not only the soccer program, but also academics, right? Because I, you know, one of the biggest things that my family always instilled in me is what happens after you're done playing? What happens if you get hurt? What happens if you don't go pro? What happens if you play semi-pro and you need to have another job? Like you always start thinking about, okay, what do I want to do with my life beyond the game, right? You see guys who are, you know, 30, 31, and they're already, you know, retired. And you're like, damn, like, that's not old at all. Like, you have a whole life ahead of you. So my question is, when you were considering schools, were you considering them also, like, both at an academic and soccer level? Or was it more just like, hey, this place is kind of cool, like, I want to live here? Like, walk me through your thought process behind picking a school. Yeah, so, I mean, I didn't have that many offers. I had a couple D3 offers, uh, like a JUCO offer, and um, that was basically it. But I want – I mean, I didn't have that many options, so it's not – at least coming out of high school, transfer process was different. Different, um, yeah. Yeah. We, we'll get into, yeah, we can get into that later. But um, I, I did look at academics. I did want something that had at least a business program or a sport management program. Nice. Um and a couple of the top schools that I, or my top schools at the time that I was looking at, or my t top options, uh, they both had that. So then I kind of looked at distance. One school was in Pennsylvania. That was like, it was a seven hour drive. So it's kind of far. Mm -hmm. um, it, the Pittsburgh Steelers training camp is right there. So that kind of <laughs> had me interested for a little That's bit. A, I saw like nice. Antonio Brown, Juju, Smith Schuster. Um, That's awesome. Like they, I, met, I met them. So it was pretty cool. Uh, that was a cool experience, and uh, but I I kind of decided on Anna Maria College. It was like three and a half hours. Um, they they had a vision with their program. I I believed in my talent, and I thought that I could play at this level. So nice. Um, that's that's kind of how I came to that decision. Dude, that's yeah. awesome. Um, so Anna Maria College was your choice. You kind of explained why that was your choice. Um, talk to me really quick about your parents, man. Like, I think the parents are super impactful in this process. Mm -hmm. At least they should be. If they're not, I think that more communication needs to be happening at the dinner table whenever you guys are able to gather. Talk about the future, right? But talk yeah. to me about your your parents, whether they were supportive or, I don't know, maybe you felt like they weren't. Who knows? But just talk to me to, about, you know, their involvement when you were trying to make this decision. And again, you're you're a kid, right? Like, you're 17, 18 years old. You're trying to somehow decide, okay, these next four years of my life, where do I want to live? Where do I want to be? Can I picture myself playing there? Can I picture myself living there? And how did your parents kind of help you along? I mean, how impactful were they? Yeah, so it's funny. Uh, stereotypes are a funny thing too. 
Um, <laughs> so my my mom and my dad were both very smart. Uh, my mom went to Cal. Uh, she's she's born in she uh, was born in Colorado and raised in Los Angeles. Uh, my dad was born in Philadelphia and extremely smart. So, I mean, uh, he was one of the top two students in his class in high school. Uh, he went to Brown for undergrad, uh, oh, Princeton wow. for graduate school. So, uh, compared to, I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty good student, I'd like to say, but from an Asian family, it, <laughs> I, it's actually funny because I haven't really talked about this before. My parents, um, they're actually very supportive, uh, of my grades and like of how I go about school. Um, and I, I do value soccer. Um, a lot of Asian families, it's academics and athletics are way down yeah. here. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, I'm actually glad that they were very supportive. Uh, they let me play soccer. Um, I had pretty decent grades. Uh, I, w- I was always very hard on myself and I think, um, well, they, they understood that. And, uh, I mean, I almost dropped out of high school, which is actually really crazy. Um, why, so, why was so my family like, drop out? Yeah. So, um, I've talked about this a couple of times on my channel and this is another reason why I did want to start my channel. Cause I wanted to obviously like engage other people and know that like, they're not alone because, uh, my mental health, it was really bad. I almost, uh, took my life when I was in um high school and wow so that kind of my parents uh were very supportive about that and uh i think they they understood that they didn't need to push me because whether it's school or academic or yeah school or soccer i'm gonna push myself harder than anyone else could so uh they were very supportive with that um i think if my grandparents were my parents they'd be like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> this is not an option. Like you can't be playing college soccer. Like, yeah, no pressure. But, kid. <laughs> uh, my, my dad played soccer in high school. Uh, my mom ran a little bit, uh, she did track in high school, but they didn't play so, college. So they, under, they understood like the, the importance, I guess you could say, or the value that athletics provides to oh, a student. Yeah, right. Definitely. Yeah. So okay. yeah, they definitely saw more value than like, previous generations like would have yeah for sure um did you feel any pressure just a follow-up question you know you talk a lot about your the accolades that your parents won academically right whatever it may be Mm -hmm. i know i when i was a kid right i think everybody at some stage has like parents as their heroes or whatever the case may be um you know we we grew up kind of in a i don't want to say we were just you know poor right but we grew up in a very um interesting situation like i i've grown up in like basements as like our living situation. And um, I always thought that my parents did the absolute best that they could. But with that said, I kind of held them up on a pedestal to an extent, right? Like I want to be doing at least as well as they are, if not better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But because your, you know, your parents had, my parents didn't have an education, right? They kind of just, um, they, my my dad came to this country with what he had and he met my mom here and and that's just, you know, they, they just made it work. Did knowing what you knew about your parents, did you feel like there was just, even if they didn't tell you, maybe they were just wildly supportive, but you maybe yeah. just carried this pressure of being their son, knowing what they've accomplished academically and maybe felt any kind of need to, to match it. I mean, I don't know. Does that go through your head? Yeah. So, well, uh, my grandparents, they were immigrants. Um, and that, that's obviously like they put the pressure, I think on my parents. Well, like mm-hmm. both my grandparents were immigrants on, on both sides. Um, but I think my parents, it kind of started going to a different trend. And I personally wanted, I don't, I don't like the Asian stereotype and I don't like stereotypes in general. I wanted to be different. I wanted yeah. to be unique, be my own person, um, do my own thing. And that's kind of what helped lead me to YouTube uh, when I started. I've talked about it a couple of times, how I've gotten into it. Um, but just like, uh, doing something more than just, oh, like he's so smart. Oh, like in the classroom, that's what he's known for. Like, I kind of wanted to do something that everyone could see. Oh, that's cool. Like I freestyle, I do, um, 
like a lot of it's, if, if people don't know what freestyle is soccer freestyle it's like juggling mm-hmm. tricks um i just think that's super cool and like people are just telling me like yo that trick that you did like that's <laughs> sick um that that kind of just like makes me like they're like yeah i enjoyed watching that um enjoyed the soccer content that kind of so in a sense i did want to succeed and but at the same time i wanted to do something different in my own path Mm -hmm. um and i'd say that like youtube's been a good success for me so far um if i'd never made another video i'd say all the it's funny because i just thought of this uh like yesterday last night like how would i feel if i could never make another video what was youtube a success was content creating worth it and i'd say i mean it's gotten me um I got to kind of accomplish all the things for the most part, or some of the big goals that I had. I wanted to start a um, clothing line. So I kind of did that. I made a good amount of money. Obviously it's not like something that's going to be long-term, but at the time it was like, all right, I, I got that, this done. Uh, sponsorships, I always wanted to get a sponsor. And um, when the when the NCAA changed the NIL rules, I was, beyond ecstatic because, <laughs> um I, could, I was like i'd need to be one of the first division three athletes to get yeah. a sponsorship like obviously most of the nil deals were going to d1 athletes but i'm like i think i have something like that i can offer uh with my content creation being a division three soccer player there's like only a few channels that even offer any division three content yep um so i kind of like was unique in that and a lot of people say like Oh, it's D one or bust. Like, yeah, but like it's a myth. athletes, it like, is a myth. Yeah, that's a that's one myth that we're gonna break. Um, if if you're a little kid and then you go to a, a D three soccer game, you're like, oh, this is sick. Like these these yeah. players look like pros to me. Like, uh, even just like at Anna Maria College, um, we would have these night, this like uh, local night where these local uh, town players like in the like high youth, school players uh, around the yeah. around the city? No, like like even like uh, oh youth players. AYSO, like seven year olds, like they would come yeah. up, and play at halftime. Like that's cool. They like get to meet you like that. They were that was like super cool for them. And then I've also coached um, and kind of got to meet other kids that way. And it's when I one th- goal that I really kind of accomplished was like I wanted people to recognize me without me like explaining oh what do you do like no like they were just like they came up to me like i've watched your videos like i was like that's that's cool to me I'm, like they're like can i get a picture kind of autographs <laughs> nice. um, like yeah they're little kids but at the same time like who doesn't want to sign an autograph like yeah well it's, yeah. it's a picture like with it, a little kid to your point like I, I think you know i put myself in their shoes and when i was that age if i had something local that was available to me then you could see yeah. yourself in their shoes, right? And be like, oh, I want to be that guy. I want to be Caleb. I want to, yeah. you know, he, he's doing something yeah. right. Like, I, he's cool. Like, I want to follow his path. So I think that is the the story here, right? Like, you you almost kind of want to, like, make your own path. But at the same time, you also want to mentor people behind you. And, and that's kind of how I approach it, too, even with coaching. Um, you know, I don't want people to, to be like, to put me on a pedestal. I'll be like, oh, that guy played D1. Yeah. Like, you know, that's the end all be all. It's like, no, everybody has their own story. Everybody has their own path. Yeah. It's all about just how you approach it. And then who you follow as kind of that mentor in front of you. So that's yeah. cool, man. And one thing yeah. I'll add to that too, by the way, I mean, you guys mentioned about D1 and I, I will say, you know, the, the, we're talking about breaking myths on this, on this episode. I mean, um, D1 is a massive opportunity. We cannot understate that enough. It is a massive opportunity. And what tends to happen is, yeah, most typically you get top level talent at those programs. I will say though, um, as someone who played it, we kind of have the full spectrum here. I played D2, I just played D1, yeah, yeah, D3 player in Caleb. So like, I, I, I feel as though we, we can all kind of talk to each one of those points, but you know, when we, the preseason is the perfect opportunity, I think for young players in high school to get an understanding of the overlap that yeah. exists between each of these divisions. Um, mainly because that's when you see those programs play against one another, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like every, every preseason, uh, when I went to Midwestern State and, you know, Wichita Falls, Texas, we would scrimmage against um, SMU. It would be an exhibition match. We'd always travel to Dallas for that match. And every single time it was a close game, 3-3, 1-1, or we beat them 2-1. 
And, um, you know, it, it, yeah, it's an exhibition match. Yeah, it's preseason. But these players are going hard. They want to win this. They want to set a tone for the season that allows them to be successful. And I think that that's one of the biggest myths I, I've, I've always heard is that if I don't make it D1, it's bust. I don't want to play college soccer. Mm -hmm. And, and then that, when I tell myself that when I hear these things is, well, then you, you don't really want to play or you don't understand how it works. Mm -hmm. um, because D1, well, I think, you know, you get the probably, yes, the, the, Andre, what would you call it? The top level of competitive experience? You would get a, a, a fantastic competitive experience. Mm -hmm. But I think that there are still things that D2 and D3 schools can offer that D1 schools can't. It really just depends on what you want to accomplish in college. The, the playing is always supplementary and complementary to what you're actually experiencing as a student, right? So to me, it's all subjective. I think if you can, I, I think that there's a stat out there that says it's less, less than 10% of all high school soccer players go on to make it to the college level. So if you make it, if you get recruited, you play for any one of these programs, you're already better than 90% of players that come through the high school ranks. Mm -hmm. Like just appreciate yeah. that. Right. I think mean, that's, that's a huge point to make because, and that's why yeah. I don't want to downplay what, 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 what you accomplished, Caleb. I think it's huge. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, other players need to understand that it's, that's an accomplishment in itself, regardless of what division you actually play in. Yeah. There's, there's talent in all levels is what I always say. Um, when kids come up to me and they're getting recruited or they're starting to put together their profiles or highlight reels or whatever. And, you know, they have these like big ambitions, right? Like, especially here in Seattle, I want to play for the UW period. Like that's, that's where the list ends. And I'm like, you know, that team is 30 kids. They're, you know, all over the place. They're, they're doing uh, international recruit recruiting. And by the way, if you want to go to class, you're going to have to be sitting in like this auditorium with thousands of people in class where you won't be able to know anybody next to you or the teacher. Is that something that you want? And then you start kind of sh like shifting that mindset, right? I think that to go even deeper, yes, if you think you're good enough, for sure, that should be your goal, but you also have to be realistic at some point. And a lot of times kids, especially that young, if they don't have the support from parents or even like an, a college advisor in high school or even their college coach or sorry, their high school coach, um, to say, Hey, do I want to live close to home? For example, right. Caleb, like, do I want to be three, four hours away from home where my parents can come watch me play on the weekends where if I'm feeling homesick for whatever reason, I can just drive home or do I want to live? Do I don't care? And do I want to live across the country? Do I want to live in a big city? I went to DePaul university, which is in the middle of Chicago, Chicago's top three largest cities in the, in the country, right? One of the biggest cities in the world. It's scary for some people. Like I had, you know, there were kids that I played with that lasted a semester. They were great soccer players but the city of Chicago is just too much for them. So mm -hmm. you, you have to find your, your niche in terms of not only the soccer aspect of it, but your life, right? Like, do you want to live in a college dorm? Do you want to live in a place where there's nothing but the college? Um, so you just kind of have to make those decisions ahead of time. And then trust me, like Jose said, there's, there's an opportunity for everybody. So it's that's, cool that's to see your point, path. Andre. And that's why I asked the question, right? Like, yeah. did your parents, did you and your parents have mm -hmm. those types of discussions? leading up to you choosing to go to Anna Maria College? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, my parents and I, uh, we, we talked about it, and they were like, do you think, do, can you see yourself going to this school? Um, and I was just like, I, I see myself going here. I, this is where I can see myself playing. I can see myself being able to fit in here. All, when I went on the visit, all the people were extremely nice. Um, Coaches seemed uh, like they were going to be fair coaches, giving me an opportunity. Um, and academic-wise, I met uh, a couple of the main professors and one of them who was actually going to be my advisor. So I, uh, after those talks, it just really f uh, fit in. Um, but one thing I do want to add to what you said, Andre, is um, how there's talent at every level. And do you, so division division three versus division two versus division one NAIA JUCO, uh, whatever. I think a lot of it for high school athletes or just younger athletes who aren't at the college level yet, maybe that they want to play division one or whatever. There's some people I think that one myth is like it's your status, like mm -hmm. you, you get to have D one next to your name. I play division one, okay, but if you're not one of the top players at a division one school, are you even playing? Are you even, have you even mm -hmm. touched the field at all? You might be a practice player. They might send you down to the club team. Like 
coaches, you have to really listen. Like, are they offering you? What are they offering you? Scholarship yeah. money? How much are they going to actually support you? Like, there's so mm-hmm. much more that goes into it than just, oh, I'm Division One. Like, and I know that some people might regret that after if they don't really think that through. I mean, obviously, who doesn't like want to have Division One next to their name? But what does it really mean to yourself? Like, it, are you doing it so other people view you one way, or are you doing it for yourself? And I Bingo. think yeah. one thing that was interesting for me was like when I was my fir- freshman year of college, when I was a freshman, I kind of was like, I'm playing division three soccer. Like how, how do I feel about that? Like, bef- so my content creation originally, it was just like, um, I did public interviews. I did, I had a couple of soccer, like parts inside my vlogs, but it wasn't all soccer yet. Mm. at the time yeah and caleb what just at the time um what what year what grade were you in when you started this like was it freshman year of college when when did you start creating content so yeah so i went to london my senior year of high school during uh spring break i saw these people doing public interviews i'm like this is so cool like they get to do something unique i was like all right i'm gonna take this back to the u.s i'm gonna do make it my own thing um, there's some public interviews in the U S but London, super big for public interviews, um, even bigger there. So I was like, all right, let's, this is a unique idea. Uh, so I started doing that vlogged across the graduation stage, like interviewed people. Are you smarter than a fifth grader question? Stuff like that. <laughs> and then I was like, it, it kind of became a, a lot because I was doing that soccer and school. So I was like, all right, I'm ready to make all my soccer content with my YouTube channel, it saves me a little time. And there's so much content that I can make because I know this section of my life and of soccer. So it kind of made sense. Yeah, you're just documenting um, what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. It's not like, I know some people, they like, uh, at least like basketball YouTubers, like they do like clickbait and stuff like that. But Usually, I don't even have to do that much clickbait. It's just like what actually happened in the game. Like sometimes people will talk trash. Like it's part of something. <laughs> sometimes there's like fights. Like whatever. Like yeah. Like they're gonna mess you up. Like um, and that that can get you your title and thumbnail just like that. Uh, game day vlogs. They're unique. You get to see your whole day. So everything kind of just it adds it added up for me. Love it. And, and, or you could just, you know, go really balls to the wall and completely just, you know, trust up as a woman, go out there and play a pickup <laughs> game with a bunch of guys and, and document all of do it. do that too. There you go. Part, part two, part two might be coming soon. I haven't really oh, put let's it go. out there on Instagram or anything. I'm, I might have a chance to do a part two, but I'm, at least I'm happy that I got to do at least one part. Uh, yeah. Cause that was, that was really cool. That was it was, it was, too. it was really cool to watch. And guys, for, for, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I will link um, the video part one of Caleb kind of dressing up and, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say baiting these guys, but like, you know, I'm sure they probably thought like, okay, there's a chick coming in to play pickup games. <laughs> this should yeah. be interesting. And you go out there. I'm sure you're super physical. You yeah. just start balling. Um, I don't even know yeah. what I would think. I'm like, should, should I? I don't know. Should I bump yeah, up or, this girl on the field? Right. Like, how, how, do, how do I go about this without making, you know, yeah. <laughs> seeming like it was a like, uh, it was a league, a league game too. Oh <laughs> shit. It wasn't just pickup. Completely pick up. Pick up. So, oh, that's awesome. so they were, there was a score, there was refs, like that's okay. what kind of made it like, gave it, that's gave it a little more interesting. Uh, yeah. So Let me ask awesome. you. So, so just, so just, just, just to confirm on something, cause I was curious, did they find out yeah. at the venue that like you, you were just kind of impersonating someone the whole time? Yeah, so at the end, I did a um, basically just a reveal, and I just took everything off, and it was funny. Uh, <laughs> but if I do play, do a part two, I do want to go through the whole thing, and no one's going to know, even when I leave the building. Nice. So it it only be released on YouTube that they'd know that I'm... That's awesome. I'm actually disguised, it's like but... Uncle Drew. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's like an Uncle Drew video. I mean, I, I was just saying it to that's myself. That's the vibe I was trying to go for. Yeah, that was sweet. I haven't really seen uh, a soccer player dress up as a girl, so I thought no. it was interesting. I thought I've only seen do this. I've only seen the one uh, with Cristiano Ronaldo in like a plaza 
in the middle of a plaza and like yeah, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. I know what he's, about but he's, he's got like a beard long was, hair sunglasses yeah yeah he was yeah. dressed up as like a homeless man all yeah much. that's what it was yeah and yeah yeah no like one passing the no ball one around wanted or something. to respect him yeah no one yeah. wanted to respect him all these girls were rejecting him yeah and this little kid i don't know yeah. if it was staged or not but this little kid comes up to him starts passing and then Ronaldo yeah. takes off his stuff and all and these then, girls like, come back shuts oh, people yeah yeah um the minute I see, but first off, the minute I see an old man, just even moving that quickly, like you could, like anybody who knows ball, yeah. right? You you see somebody's legs Footwork. move a little bit, you're like, yeah. oh no, that that there's no way this is real. Like that that guy <laughs> is moving way too quickly for him for this to be like an actual yeah. homeless person just just out here juggling and freestyling. But and and, and I I'll be honest, man, I probably would have. I'm not gonna say I would have sniffed out your you know your whole disguise, yeah. disguise, yeah, but. The minute like you started getting like like I don't know it, it, I I saw some plays on that video where you were kind of getting physical or or just kind of maneuvering your way through yeah. players yeah. I don't know um I would have yeah. maybe suspected something I'm like I, I don't know man this seems a little fast for <laughs> for you know just 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 what I'm expecting so yeah. Yeah. either way fantastic video and like I mentioned before we'll link it below in the description but back to the interview so you mentioned starting to create content you've done some really cool things um I want to talk about your transfer. Because to me, yeah. it's a really interesting time to transfer to another program in your academic career. Yeah. Um, so walk me through the process, man. What were you thinking? What was the motivation for the transfer? And then ultimately, why did you choose your destination? Yeah, so it's really interesting, uh, the transfer process. I was a little nervous when I decided I wanted to transfer. Um, but I wanted to play in the NCAA tournament, get, make the NCAA tournament. Uh, win the conference, wherever I would go, like have a chance at that at least. Like, um, and there was nothing against like the school I was at. There's no hard feelings. Like some of our top players, like could be playing division one. So, uh, there, there, they improved, um, my Anna Maria college, like they made the playoffs this year. So, uh, I still keep in touch with all of them. Like they're, they they know how to play soccer. It's just like um, there's some aspects of a program that just need to be built up uh, in the culture, and I just wanted to have a chance to play uh, in a place that I could actually have a chance at making the NCAA tournament. Um, also academically, because I wanted to I wanted to graduate from a school that has like a really good business program. Uh, so those were a few of the things I was looking for when I was transferring. Um, and at first i was like when i told my coach i was gonna do this i was like what if i get no offers and i reached out to a few schools i put my name in the portal there's a few ways um to so if you're going to look at another division three school you can fill out this form uh but if you're division two or division looking for a division two or division one you put your name in the portal there's a lot of paperwork right with 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 transfers yeah so it's Honestly, go, looking for another Division three school is not that hard. You fill out a self-release form, you sign your name, that's basically it. You just email that to them, uh, putting your name in the portal. It's a little tedious, not too not too hard, actually. Uh, you just get your athletic director to send you a form. You fill it out. Basically, they send it back, and then you're in the portal. Um, but I ended up with, like, 18 or 19 offers. No shit. Wow. And I'm – uh that was sh- like i was very surprised at that because out of high school i tr- i tried looking for schools tried getting offers doing anything i could put in even way more time and effort i'd say out of high school to just find a team like that could somewhat fit me like mm-hmm. just somewhat mm-hmm. and i ha- ended up with like three or four offers out of high school um, out of my transfer process i'm at 18 or 19 offers um and I, I put it on my channel i don't remember the exact number but it was like it was a roughly half and half like half offered me first and half i reached out to first and then they offered mm-hmm. me um but i'd say that the biggest thing that helped me uh was my highlight video i mean i was playing against college soccer players in my highlight video i was breaking their ankles i would say <laughs> uh, just <laughs> drifting by players like 
Uh, you were similar, experienced. Some teams, you were experienced, yeah, right? You had team, exactly. yeah, a, a tape that showed what you could do, not against high school talent, but against college talent. Yeah. yeah. And I was also uh, one of the captains at Anna Maria College my junior year. So, um, I mean, they see that leadership uh, side as well. So I was like, all right, yeah. I got this. I got this. I'd start every game uh, that I was healthy. I, I actually got COVID my junior year. and I had to miss like four or five games. Uh, so that basically, that, that was really surprising to see. Um, but I'd really say for anyone trying to get recruited, highlight video is so important. A good highlight video, it can at least be a baseline for coaches to see like, okay, this kid can at least kind of play for some coaches that might be enough to just offer you. So, um, depending on the school too, obviously. Uh, but that's just one other thing I'd, I'd add. What's the time frame? Um, I'm just curious uh, between when you made the decision of, hey, I want to transfer to getting that self release form, getting on the portal, and then actually getting uh, offers. Like, was it like months? Was it weeks? Was it days? Yeah. So it was, it was not too long, actually. I think uh, I reached out to like four schools within the first week. It was like mm -hmm. around March, I'd say. Um, and I reached out to some schools. I got two offers within the first like four or five days. It's pretty quick. Um, I got my yeah. first, first division two offer within like two or three weeks. And then I got another division two offer. I got a NAIA school that was like top five in the country. Um, Dang. and so, and then I had other division three offers just piling in, uh, so that it, the process didn't take me too long. I know there were a couple other kids from my school that were transferring. Uh, didn't take them too, too long either for, to get the one or two offers they were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of was more like when I was, when I got one offer, I was like, okay, at least I got an offer, mm -hmm. two offers. Okay. Now I have some options and then more options. So uh, I kind of was pretty, I was pretty thorough with the process. Um, and yeah, I, cool. it, it didn't take too too long for me. So let, nice. let's let's so the other timeline there. Um, you had we yep. say nineteen offers. How yeah. did you sift through those and decide <laughs> that Western New England was where you wanted to be? Like, what was your criteria? What were you looking for? Yeah, so it was. I mean, I actually had options this time, so I I actually looked heavily at the academics, especially since I wanted to be graduating soon. Yep. Um, and I was a, I had two years left at eligibility after uh, I decided to transfer. So technically I still have one year left, but when I was transferring, um, I was looking for good academics, good location, uh, soccer program, obviously. So all those things uh, kind of played out like into my decision and just kind of, I wanted a good culture on the field, off the field campus uh so those did were you, some of the main things i was looking for did you go visit the schools that you were like say your top two top three or was it just like, like hey yeah, talking so to coaches? i did i visited i'd say i think i visited four of the offers a couple of the offers they were like down south so it was like 10 hour drives mm -hmm. like yeah kind of didn't entertain them too much i wanted to stay in the northeast so um cool but yeah so i did i did visit those like nice. love it yeah so that, on the I mean, soccer side no oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. the only thing that i was gonna say is that's another like key part of the whole process is like you have this idea in your head of what a school can be or what the coaches tell you yeah you know what you know of like maybe you remember a game that you went to when you were little um i'll use uw as an example again right like they have a football team for example they're nationally recognized they play in the pac-12 like all that has this like bigness to it but like, if you don't go and visit, you know, during like the cold months off season when you have to like get up in the morning yeah. and, you know, you follow the players around and they got to go play indoor at 8 a.m. And then they've got, you know, maybe a PT appointment and then they've got class until nighttime. Like once you get in the weeds, then you actually get a good feel for what your experience is going to be like as opposed to, yeah. yeah, they'll send you a flyer. They'll send you, you know, a, a nice little like uh, YouTube video about the school, whatever. Like that's just so yeah. like high level. So I think. 
you know, that's why I was asking, like, if you made your decision based on just like a hunch or if you actually want to visit. So that's cool that you did, because yeah. I always recommend that even to, to players who are like may not necessarily be getting recruited yet or they haven't even talked to the coach. It's like, dude, if, if it's a local school, just grab your parents and literally go walk around campus yeah. on a Saturday, like get a feel for yeah. what the life would be like. So anyway, that's cool. Yeah. No, 100 percent. And I just to piggyback on that, like I think a, there's a lot of misconceptions, too, around day to day. Right. Like you, yep. you guys mentioned, just getting a feel of what you're going to be like on campus and what life is like there. That, that That's massively important. But then on top of that, right, mm -hmm. can you go take a tour on a day um, yep. where there's classes going on and get an understanding of what your day to day is going to be like? Right. I didn't realize this till my freshman year, but I, you know, I, I remember I looked at like just waking up in October one day and I was like, dude, my day <laughs> is way more crammed than I thought it was ever going to be. And you create content, Caleb. That's crazy. But like my day from top to bottom without taking too long was I, you know, I wake up at five 30 for workouts at six classes started at eight. So I would like go eat breakfast in between, um, from eight to 12 hours in class. Once I got done with class, I would go have lunch, take a nap yeah. for like 30 minutes before practice started at like two o'clock. Um, and then we trained for like three hours. We get done around five. Um, I go, homework. <laughs> you know, yeah, homework, ice up, I go have dinner. And then after dinner was over 7 PM, there were study hall and mandatory yep. for all student athletes. I had to go to yeah. study hall, be there for two hours. Yep. I was done with my day at 9 p.m. every day. It's a long fucking and day, dude. <laughs> dude. It's a long day. Yeah. And like mo most I think athletes don't realize that. Like yeah. you're it's a job. It's really it, it truly job. is a job. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So like, you know, I, I think that that's super important um to really harp on here is that, you know, y there's so much that you're willingly signing up for. Like understand yeah. the responsibility that comes along with that. But from your perspective, Caleb. I just mentioned all the things I had to go through without creating content. <laughs> How the hell yeah. did you squeeze in a YouTube channel? I honestly, I don't know. I <laughs> looking back at it now, like <laughs> looking back at it now, it's like there were some nights like on weekends where I would stay up till like two at two thirty a.m. Like just editing from nine nine a.m. or nine p.m. till like two. And it takes time to, I, I made my own thumbnails. I uploaded it. Um, so like all of that, I edited my own video. So all of that took me, I just would use like a Friday night or a Saturday night, usually a Saturday night actually, because we would have a game on Saturday and Friday we'd have practice. So we, I'd have to be up. So usually a Saturday night, I still remember my freshman year, actually, I haven't really talked about this that much. Um, but yeah, like, sometimes people would be like, oh let's go out like <laughs> let's go hang out blah blah like whatever i'm like i gotta edit like i was I like was have another job <laughs> on top of everything that <laughs> we know, do <laughs> pretty much i was like i like i was i was really dedicated to it um i think knowing that people watch my videos like it could be like five people if i'm if i'm making five people like take their time out of their day to watch it like i want to create content because five people actually care yeah so that that was another motivation for me to create my videos and stay consistent i uploaded once a week uh usually on sundays and that was kind of just like how it went uh sometimes i started changing it a little bit like my upload schedule but at the time for like probably two and a half years straight i just every sunday every sunday and i think i missed like once maybe i was very consistent so that's cool. Huh? And it's not easy to be consistent on YouTube. A lot of people I know, like they started a channel consistent for like a month done. It's, it's exhausting. It is. Yeah. Nice. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And that's why like, it, it amazes me that you were able to consistently upload new content every week, especially during season. I couldn't even imagine how that would work during season. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like, I feel like I made every excuse sometimes just to be like, if I have some downtime, man, I'm going to rest. I'm tired. I, I don't want to think about school. I don't want to think about, I didn't have a job at the time. Soccer was my job, but I didn't want to think about anything yeah. else. It's like, I just, I want to break. Right. And, and I think also different times, right. I went to school in 09. Andre went to school in 07. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, um, you know, I think a different time now, I think it's awesome to see that you're building a personal brand outside of what you're doing on the field. Is there something that you would like if, if, I think what I want to get to is if, if, if a, another student athlete was considering going down the same path that you went down, right? They don't just want to be um, a top level student athlete. They also want to be a content creator and document their journey. What's the one piece of advice you'd give them? 
I would say no. The one piece of advice I'd say know what you're getting into. Like you'll you'll learn along the way. That's what I did. Like I didn't really have anyone that I really talked to. Um there was actually one person that I talked to, he's a basketball YouTuber. He's over like seven hundred fifty thousand subscribers now. Like wow. His name's Devante Devante Friga. He um does like park basketball videos, uh like all this viral content. Um he talked to me about division three uh athletics and then balancing content creation. Uh so that's basically what what he told me is just like be careful with NCAA eligibility. Um but also just I just knew it was like it's a lot of work. That's what you gotta know. Yeah. Just know what you're getting yourself into. Realistic expectations. Hundred sure. percent, yeah. man. Hundred yeah. percent. Awesome, dude. This was I mean this whole conversation was fantastic. I loved every part of it. Um I think what I want to do really quickly, and we're kind of in these last few minutes of the show. Um I wanna <laughs> I kind of want to break you out of your shell a little bit and I want people to know a little bit more about the personal side of Caleb. So I kind of drafted these, um, these like icebreaker questions, if you oh, will. Sense. Yeah. I think they're always, I, I don't want to go far as far down as like, Oh, let's play 20 questions with Caleb. Like, that, that I was going to say, are we going to go know, rapid fire? <laughs> like <the laughs> we don't have to go comes, rapid fire. First thing that comes to mind. <laughs> family feud, family feud style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, game show style. Five I, seconds, I de- five seconds. I yeah. definitely want we'll you, you to, <laughs> Maybe get to the point where you you say the first thing that comes to your mind, but I mean, answer the way you want to answer. Yeah. Right? Some of these will be quick fire; other others you may have to think on, and that's totally okay. So, you know, let's jump in and um, let's just see if we can, you know, intro Caleb and um, you know yeah. how you think to the world. So, first things first, we'll keep it really easy, right? Um, favorite club team in the world, West Ham. West Ham. Oh, that, that's a great one. Um, I'm, I'm not a big. <laughs> Come on, you irons. Hell yeah. Uh, me and you can disagree on that one only because I'm an Arsenal fan, but we'll talk about that later. Um, all right. My, Favorite. My roommate's an Arsenal fan. Oh, oh there man. you go. There you go. It's like Love me and Andre. City, it's like, it's like City Andre, might bro. be getting a 15 point deduction, so. Yeah, that would be. Oh, my right. God. Uh, fa- <laughs> Favorite player of all time? Uh, I, I think I'd say Ronaldinho. That's Ooh, a great like, one, dude. Love that, answer, that is man. a great one. You don't get that a lot. You get a lot of Messi, Ronaldo. Black people don't talk about like other greats that helped propel their careers. I yeah. love the Dino answer. Say, that's my favorite of all time. I wouldn't say greatest, but I would say favorite. Yeah, your favorite. The guy. Great I mean, answer. the guy's always smiling, and the glue, and the ball's like glued yeah. to his he, foot. How could you not love him? Oh my gosh. There's three the videos you've seen. I know, I know. Crazy. There's three. So I, there's three players. I'm a Real Madrid fan, so there's three players from Barcelona that I would take in a heartbeat: Ronaldinho. Rafa Marquez and Giovanni Dos Santos. That's it. Two of them were. You wouldn't take Messi. I was about to say, bro. There's no way you wouldn't take Messi. There's no way. I'm good. I'm good. Move on. About, no, that's how real the, the Madrid bias is. By the way, Caleb. That, that, I'll take Luka Modric. I'll take Luka Modric. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we're moving on. Um, so I've seen that you scored at the college level, at the high school level. What's the best goal you've ever scored? Describe it to us. Best goal I've scored. Um, it was a bicycle. I scored a bicycle kick. It was. Let's go. Cool. But it was a bicycle kick. It was. It was a. Bicycle you caught kick. it perfectly, like like Wayne Rooney against like City style, it. or like how was it? it? I was crossed crossed uh, over my back shoulder. I was on the left left side, crossed in from the right side, swoops over my head, time it perfectly, jump, hit it, top bins. <laughs> oh, Dude, honestly, let's go. like it was it was indoor. <laughs> it was indoor league. Did you just wow. walk out? Oh gosh, that, <laughs> you just walked out of there. That's cool. I'm done. <laughs> I, I just I walked backwards. I was like this. I was just like hands up. Like, that, that no dude, celebration. Th- that's a Balotelli. People were dude. screaming. It was a ball- <laughs> crazy. That's a Balotelli move right there. That, it was seriously. Yeah, it was crazy. Dude, I, as a defender, I'm a de- so Andre's the attacker, the resident attacker in this group. I'm a defender, and so the thought of like scoring a goal that prolific is like so foreign to me. So I, I always like thinking about people describing it because like I'm like, dude, I I would crazy. never score like that. The craziest thing I would do is like. Some weird header off Checks, or, or check somebody on a board yeah. playing indoors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the 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 physical part was definitely one of my favorite parts of the game. Um. Okay, so let's get a little more personal. Spotify or Apple Music? Apple Music. Okay, got it. Um, if you could have one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? 
I, it's I a hard one. I don't know how to answer that. I, I can't, Pick one, bro. I'm not very. And your college age, I think your your palette is like not going to be as wide as like you know, <laughs> honestly, like me and Andres, right? But like, like just I, I just want to get into the mind of a college athlete. What's just your one thing, dude? Meal? I'm just trying to think of like what I wouldn't get sick of. <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> Maybe some pasta dish. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Pasta's always some good. Some meat sauce, because I I feel like I could go with that for a while. Yeah. I mean, like, a, do you, do you crave athlete. it though? Do you crave it though? Like, what's the thing that you crave? Oh. Like, if you're, what, what if it was your last meal? How about put it that? My way? last meal. I I really love meatloaf. Uh, That's actually okay. an interesting meatloaf. one. Okay, <laughs> meatloaf, meatloaf, and mac and cheese muffins together. Oh Ooh, my gosh! Man, uh, that sounds nice. Mac and cheese, I'm mac hungry and now. cheese muffins have to be the <laughs> most underrated. One of the most underrated mac Damn. and cheese like ways to make it. Oh my huh, gosh. Okay. I haven't right. made it in muffin form, but I'm very intrigued by that answer. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, it's I'm it's a little crispy. If you like crispy on the edges, the cheese is perfect. You put the breadcrumbs on top. Oh, Ooh. dude. All right. First of all, big mac and cheese is always like supreme. Like if, yeah, we're, if we're talking yeah, about it, like 100%. 100%. Dude. Oh, man. That's mac insane. Muffins, bro. Mac okay. and cheese muffins are underrated. I'm dude, right. this is this was the greatest response somebody could have given because like you, what dude, do you I would get, never right? in my life no, I guess that you, you you get like a steak, you get like pizza, pizza or some crazy Tacos, thing like that, right? Sushi, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wouldn't be like you know, yeah, meatloaf, meatloaf and mac and cheese. Mom, the meatloaf. Like, that, it, mom, <laughs> the meatloaf. Yeah, dude. Seriously, that is awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I'm again. I'm not super familiar with the town that you live in, but I, I think this is always kind of interesting. And I would ask this to other teammates whenever we would meet up for like I don't know ODP or anything else. What if you? So the best fast food restaurant near you? Hmm. I so it's funny. I, I won't make this long because this is rapid fire. But I started eating very healthy for a while. No dessert. No fast food. Like when we'd go on away trips. I'd we would stop at McDonald's. I'd bring my own sandwich. Like, oh wow, you're locked uh, in. So I was I was dedicated to that. But I before I did get on that trend, I would go to Five Guys a lot. Five Guys, mm. the burgers, dude, uh, so good. My wife Juicy. loves oh, Five Guys. Oh, I think it's days. I think it's a little overpriced, but it is. You get a lot of food, and it's crazy good. Like, I mean. That's fair. Uh, the fries, you get so many fries, you don't know what to do with them. But then on top of that, like, yes, the burgers are stacked. They're juicy. Yeah, it's, it's the peanut oil, like, bro. They cook everything I guess, in peanut oil. man. I don't know what it is, but it's they, they got a secret. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Okay, um, so that's the best one near you, you think? Oh, you can't go wrong with Chipotle either. Oh, All there right. you go. Yeah, Chipotle's I'll take a good that. one. That one's that one's actually pretty fair dude, regardless you, of where you Chipotle, go. Chipotle, not Chipotle, Chipotle. <laughs> it's, <laughs> the I, answer like I was going to say, dude, fun fact, when we were in college – there was one like two blocks away from our place and we would go for lunch and we would eat two burritos. Like, no. and you guys can relate when you're burning 6,000 calories a day, you could, oh, you man. could definitely crank you could crush burritos. food. Like, yeah. like one burrito is not even, not even close. No. It's the appetizer. No. <laughs> exactly. Like, like you could crush so food. Chipotle, that's Ch fair. Chipotle is for sure, dude. I feel you. hundred like percent. hundred percent. You can't go wrong with Chipotle. No. You know what's crazy though? I asked this question because dude, I've met. So like when you start getting down to like, I mean, I, I came from the D two area. There's there's some real small D two schools, but like I I've no team. I've had like uh, other you know players in my network who have come from like D three, NAIA, JUCO. When you get those really yeah. small towns, you get some really interesting answers to that question. Yeah, when true. I went to visit um, uh, a friend of mine who went to like this NAIA school in the middle of Kansas, and his favorite spot was this place called Taco John's. <laughs> I shit you not. It was called Taco John's. That name threw me off. Being Hispanic, bro, I was like, I don't There's know, it was Taco Juan's, bro. It was Taco John's. I was like, Taco John's, bro. I was like, dude, I don't, so I'm so fine. confused by the branding so for this fine. restaurant. But, like, but it, you know, hey, man, so teach their own. Dude. It worked. That's all you have. Yeah. It, it, what was kind of crazy was that apparently the place crushed. Like, it, you know, and granted, it was one of those places that, like, would, you know, it would brand tater tots as, like, <laughs> Their side of choice, as opposed to like, I mean, Andre, you live in Seattle, you know, talk, 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 time. It kind of felt, Mexi fries? It felt yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, it felt like that, bro. And it okay. was just like, I don't know, just the name, just the brand, just threw me off entirely. Taco but Jones, when I went, it, it actually wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Um, but yeah, it's just an interesting question, just to get a feel for for what what's around you. Taco John's. <laughs> Taco <laughs> John's. All right, um, television or movies? Ooh, I'm gonna go with television because I love watching sports. 
There you go. That's fair. I actually, I'm I'm right there with you. It's the only thing I really watch in terms of like live TV, but like I'm all in on as many but matches as I could possibly cool. consume. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's all I watch too. Um, Coke or Pepsi? And I know you're, you're an athlete, but if you had to pick one for the rest of your life, what would it be? I don't like soda. Straight up. I'd pick Straight it. up? It's good shit. One, one. Oh, Great man. Answer. Okay, neither. I like that answer. Um, AirPods or headphones? I don't like soda. You're wearing AirPods. AirPods. It's probably like a convoluted you know, <laughs> question. <laughs> you literally have AirPods as we're talking right now. Yeah. I think it's easier too. I don't yeah. usually use them actually. Like only time I really use them is like if I'm editing. Mm. But yeah, that's kind of a lot. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of your time. And I don't know. It does make it easier, but people complain all the time about losing them. So I don't know right. if that was a problem for you. I, I don't go to sleep with them. So I don't, I always just put it back in the case and like, I got these for free, actually. I want it in like a Kahoot thing at my oh, sick. college, at Anime nice. College. So there you go, like, right, W free AirPods. I'm, I'm why not? Because I was not gonna buy it. Hell yeah! Time. I just, I just had the wired ones. I'm like, 20, do 2000, it. like ten. But like, it's all right. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Love it. All right. all right. Um, home cooked meal or eating out? And eating out could be anything. It could be your dream restaurant. So if you had to choose a home cooked meal or eating out, like the best home cooked meal or the best. Like, just your choice. Yeah, the yeah. best home cooked yeah. meal or the best restaurant you could possibly go to. Taco John's doesn't I have to say. Count. Taco John's is not factor into this, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I think eating out. I've been sold on some very good restaurants with good reviews. So I might just say home cooked. But like eating out, if it's if it's top class, I'm, I'm eating out. So. Yeah, it's just easy. Fair enough. I don't know. I I also, with that said, I hate cooking. So. You know, you uh, yeah. if if I can I have it easy, I will. Once in a while, but I, I cooked every day over the summer for the most part. But yeah, eating. Did you get pretty good at it? Yeah, actually. So like two years ago, I basically just lived on my own out of nowhere. So like mm. I was just like, all right, I'm coaching in Boston. I'm gonna find a place, and I basically just I was like, mom, I called my mom up. I'm like, how do I cook this dish? <laughs> and she's like she's like all right well she went walk me through it i tried it i was like this is still not good so like i <laughs> i forced myself to learn how to cook because i'm not going to eat do horrific it. food every day and i'm also not going to spend all the money i'm making throwing it out the window eating out every day so i mean i knew how to make breakfast like i knew how to do like basic eggs omelets stuff like that like yeah it's not, for sure breakfast isn't as hard but like dinners Actually, lunches, I did eat a lot of just like turkey cheese sandwiches. Like, yeah, it's easy. So it is what it is. Dude, but yeah. I mean, yeah, it is true. It's grown. true yeah, we're grown, Andre. Yeah. And I think we, we we both do meal kits, right? Yeah, I do HelloFresh is, is my meal kit. That, that's, I day. do the same one. Yeah, I do and HelloFresh. It, and I love it. But the, the one thing I will say, though, is like when I was in school, after my sophomore year of uh, being in college, I got my own apartment as well. And there's no better way to learn how to cook. Otherwise, you starve to death, number one, or two, you're spending a shit ton of money. Uh, yeah. So I was like, fuck it. It's it is. It's it's on your own, dude. Like, And, and to this day, I still love cooking. So, it, yeah. But I could totally see it. I would say, like, pasta chicken. Whether, like, a, like a vodka sauce or, like, Alfredo. Just pasta. Dude, I... I know, bro. I know. It's different. <laughs> it's different, dude. It does, bro. I, I'm kind of on the same thread. It's different. Um, I'm, like a, I'm like a bolognese pasta kind of guy. Like... Okay. A great meat sauce, not just pour tomato sauce over sure. it and let it simmer, and like you call it a meat sauce. Like yeah. legitimately use spices dude, and other flavors to really kind of beef it up, and it's it, dude, it's amazing. It's, it's a soccer, it's a soccer thing, dude. Like if you played soccer growing up at a decent level, you were carbo loading, dude. Like you're eating pasta. Oh, hundred percent. And a lot of times people will be like, oh, like I'm sick of eating pasta. I'm like, dude, it's actually a pretty easy meal to make, and it's pretty delicious. If not, once you perfection, like. Once you find your way to like make it perfect, oh, dude, hundred percent, hundred percent agree. Piggyback on the last question, um, what's the most creative snack as a college student you Ooh. had to make? Maybe it was due to like, hey, bro, funds are a little tight this week. It kind of is what it is. I gotta you know make it mm. work, or maybe it's just like I kind of discovered something here, pretty creative. Don't <laughs> normally mix these two things, and it's a good snack. I mean, what's what's the most creative thing you came up with? You know, living the college life. I always have a reserve on granola bars, like or protein, protein bars or granola bars. 
So I'm usually pretty set with that. Sometimes I have to eat like three, which is kind of stretching it, but especially after a game, it's like the dining hall is not good, especially at Annemarie College. Um, I got really creative at the dining hall. I'd put like pour cheese sauce onto things. Like I just try to get flavor, like just like try and eliminate the other flavor that they had. Yeah. Make my own flavor. <laughs> so like, I did, don't I did worry. We won't, creative, we like, won't tell them. We won't tell them. <laughs> oh, bro. You know what? It's okay. what's crazy I, is to... I mean, go, go ahead, Caleb. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I, I think in college, that's the time to like get super creative with what you're eating. Yeah. Because the, the dining yeah. hall after a while, man, it's like, I just find myself getting the same things over yeah. and over again. I'm just eating yeah. the same stuff. So like what I would do is, uh, I had a tiny little budget for like just dorm room, like snacks and groceries when I wasn't at the dining hall that I would just have like in, you know, cubbies or shelves in my room. And um, I remember I was getting ready to my freshman year. I was getting ready to go home for Christmas break. I didn't want to go buy anything else, but I only had a few things left in the dorm. It was like the day before I was going to leave. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm just going to make this work. I'm not leaving my dorm. I'm not going to spend any more money. So uh, I remember the most creative thing was like, dude, I had a bag of instant mashed potatoes. I had a bag of tortilla chips and I had like some leftover hot dogs in my fridge. I cut those bad boys up, cooked them, <laughs> cooked up the instant mashed potatoes, put it all together. And I used the tortilla chips to kind of dip them out. Dude, it was so good. That I actually ended pretty up good. buying those thing and actually like making that as a snack recurring moving forward. It was That's awesome. Fun. I loved it. That's have yeah, you guys dude. ever heard of uh, walking taco, by the way? No. Caleb, have you? I don't think so. All right. What very, you very simple. Uh, bag of okay you can use a bag of chips any type of chip i know you don't eat okay. trash food yeah. but I think if I you it, yeah if you go if you go with fritos right mm. and then you basically cook up like ground beef stick them in there and then literally fill it up with like yeah. lettuce or cabbage onions uh tomatoes that hot sauce, good. and then you just eat it with a fork inside of the bag walking taco dude i'm telling you we used to eat that shit all the time yeah. it was fucking delicious yeah, I've, I've, I've had that. it's probably like Called so, something else in other other areas of the world, but in Chicago yeah, we yeah, call yeah. it a walking taco. That's so. what I thought you were talking about, but yeah, there you dude, go. that sounds really good. Actually, bro, um, we, we would buy yeah, like messy, a, but it sounds good. Yeah, but you'd buy the flat of like thirty pack Fritos, dude, and then you just walk around. They're like the perfect size. You make a shit ton of uh, you know beef, and then you just it's like a make it's it. like a slight variation of a Frito pie. I like it. That's uh, much, that's yeah. it's really yeah. interesting. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so last two questions. One, where now that you're getting close to graduating. Um, and moving on to your next step in your life, where do you want to travel to the most? Like you've been to a lot of places. You've been to London, you traveled for soccer and other reasons. Yeah. Is there somewhere you haven't been that you're kind of itching to go to? I just, I want to travel like to a lot of countries. Throw them well. out there, so man. What, what's, what's top five? What's top five? Top five. For each. Uh, my sis, so my sister's in her freshman year of college and she's, in London right now, and she's been to like nine different countries. Oh, so wow. nice. I'll probably have to ask her for some suggestions. Uh, and she said another one's really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually going to France for the first time coming up, so I'm excited to to do that. How soon? Spain. Want to want to go to Spain? Uh, in it's in our spring break, so it's like in a okay month and a half. coming up. Nice. So that that'll be fun. Uh, I want to see Spain, Italy. Uh, there's just a bunch of countries I want to go to. Nice, bro. Yeah, I feel you, man. One place I really want to go to that is just kind of off the wall, and that's why I want to go, is like Tokyo. Because mm. it would be such a culture shock that yeah, I right. I would be forced to break out of my comfort zone. Uh, like, like, imagine, right? You just you land there. You can't read anything. Right. Uh, at least I wouldn't be able to read anything. Yeah. I have to figure out wh where to go, what to do from the onset. And that includes things like just making sure I'm walking down the right side of the street, <laughs> making sure I understand what I'm eating, making sure yeah. I'm, um, you know, articulating myself correctly. Like all of those things, man, we take them for granted here in the States, but mm -hmm. it would be a huge opportunity to just try some of those yeah. things out in, in a country like that. Um, all right, man. Last thing. If money wasn't an object, what's the one thing you would buy today? That is very interesting. <laughs> I'd probably buy a, like a country, <laughs> an island. 
My man said, I want to own, I want to own real estate, but like, like way more than most people. (laughs) Yeah. So basically like everything inside the country. I mean, that's sick. That's That's a great answer. I mean, hell, I'd I'd be very generous. Obviously, like I'd give a lot of this stuff back to people, but like. The Kailbu Park, the Kailbu Carnival. <laughs> My men's is like Sim know. City, boy. Like, let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah! No, nah, man, that. that's awesome. Yeah. Well, think on that I some more, man. I, I think it is. Question. It is. Good and, one. I, and I think like it's it's, um, just... it, it's also like affirming of like people's priorities, right? Like when you when you remove like some of those limiting factors and into, into the thought process. What, what, if I were to ask you, you know, what's the what's the one thing you would buy today? You probably first jump to what can I afford, right? Realistically, what can I afford right now? Um, but when you remove those obstacles, I think it's, if you want to get deep into the mind of somebody, it's just interesting to kind of position it like that. Like, Hey, no obstacles. What would you do? What would you buy? Uh, but that's awesome, man. Um, all right, man, look, we're at the end of the episode. We're recording now for just over an hour. I want to turn the floor over to you now. Um, you have a lot going on in your life. You're preparing for a major step in your life post-college. Um, if there, is there anything that you're working on or something that you want to kind of leave the audience with as we bring this episode to a close? I mean, I did, I did say that part two uh, of that dressing up as a woman, maybe playing in another league, that or uh, juggling in heels. That was another idea I got. So I got, I got some ideas cooking <laughs> up. Uh, definitely gonna read the read the comment section, read the DMs. So, but that's all I gotta say. I, I really enjoyed being on the show. Awesome, Dude, man. Yeah, it we was great having you. It. Thank it was you. awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for jumping on. And guys, uh, for those who want to see more of the videos that we referenced, uh, whether it's Caleb's journey as a soccer player or some of the more creative stuff, like him dressing up as a girl and, and going out there and balling, um, I'm going to link Caleb Wu TV's channel down below in the description. Check it out. I think you're going to like it. Um, and more importantly, they're going to learn something too. So uh, guys, um, Andre, Caleb, thank you both so much for joining today. Uh, this is a great show. I loved the conversation that we had. And, uh, and I'm sure we're going to get you back onto the show at some point down the road so that we could talk about what those first steps post senior year of college um, and how those really panned out for you. So, again, Caleb Wu, thank you so much for jumping on the show today. Andre, thank you for being a great host. And uh, for anyone who tuned in, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll catch you next time on Box to Box. See you.